Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about High School Musical, the musical, the series, season 3, episode 8, the season 3 finale titled Let It Go. There's a lot of drama in this episode, so much drama, and I will now be getting into spoilers, so there is your warning there. We start right out with all the drama just sprinkling around. It's Ricky's birthday, they all wake him up and are cheering, yay, and he wants a lottery ticket, but unfortunately Big Red came and he didn't bring a lottery ticket. Jet is like, who are you? And Big Red's like, I'm Ashlyn's boyfriend, and Ashlyn's like, and then, you know, you got this whole other love triangle going on with Ricky and EJ and Gina. And meanwhile, Gina's off doing yoga or something. Thankfully, a little jump ahead in the episode, the lottery ticket is given to Ricky by a special someone in his life, and that is Nini. And I'm glad they kind of had that little sort of goodbye. I'm sure it would have been extremely awkward for them to have a scene together, because, you know, I think it works the way that they did it. And I'm glad that the focus for Nini was more on Miss Jen and Courtney, but we got some nice scenes with Miss Jen and Nini, and I think they've had kind of a really special relationship that we've seen throughout this series. And a lot of, I feel like Nini's scenes in season two were with Miss Jen, and Miss Jen has always just kind of been encouraging her to do what she wants to do. Obviously, we knew what was gonna happen because it was kind of already confirmed that this was the end of Nini's story, and I really couldn't see her story going any other direction than the way it went. There was a lot that happened last summer that I almost just wanna see a prequel season about everything that happened last summer. Obviously, the actors are like older now, and Olivia Rodrigo's done with this show, so <laughs> that's not gonna happen. One kind of random thing that I thought happened in this episode was the performance of This Is Me from Camp Rock, making this season more like Camp Rock the Musical the Musical the series than High School Musical, which is fine because it's at a camp. There's this girl that kind of has the solo portion of This Is Me, but I don't really know why they gave her the solo. I thought she had a great voice, but it was just kind of weird. She'd been in a few scenes, but it's fine. It was fine. I think what I liked most about this episode was kind of the more focus on Courtney. They've gotten a little bit of a storyline from her. She's kind of was more of comedic relief earlier in the season, and then she had a storyline about her anxiety. This episode really made that all kind of justified because I feel like it was all kind of rushed in previous episodes, but I think they really put a focus on it in this episode, and I really appreciated that. And just her anxiety paralleling with her singing Let It Go was just beautiful. So I think that was just all played out really well. I thought that was a great performance, and then kind of the music and lights shutting off, and then everyone turning their flashlights on, and Gina, like, about to murder Channing was amazing, and she turned the lights on and said, don't get me started. I wish they would have had a little bit more of Courtney in this season and kind of put more of a focus on her, especially because she was playing the second lead of the play. Another thing I appreciated about this episode, again, focusing on Courtney, we had Nini more focused on saying goodbye to Courtney than on Ricky, which I thought was really sweet and it was very emotional. You know, Nini didn't really say goodbye. She was more like, I'm so glad to see you here, blah, blah, blah. But really that was like goodbye to her best friend. Born to be brave plays in the car, which was so sweet as well. There was a lot of sad things happening in this episode and it was just a lot to take in. But I think there were some nice musical performances. I think Carlos did a great job singing in summer. And then Ricky was kind of back to his more acoustic roots in this episode with Kristoff's lullaby and my goodness that was so heartbreaking you know he's singing and he glances at gina meanwhile gina is looking off in the distance and ej's there just like the most devastated look on his face oh my gosh they just ej did not deserve this you know i i'm not necessarily disappointed with Ricky and Gina together, but I feel like EJ just deserved better than all of this 
heartbreak that he had in this season. But also in the audience, you had Nini watching Ricky, and it was just so sweet. I loved that. EJ, poor kid, he calls his dad, and he's like, I just want you to be proud of me. And let me just say, Matt Cornett's performance was actually incredible in this scene like i think this cast does a great job but i mean that performance just in that very brief moment was i was like wow i'm interested to see if val will return next season i was reading some interviews with tim federale i think that's how you pronounce it the creator of the show and he said that he's hoping a lot of the characters from this season will return in next season. I'm assuming he means Val and Maddox and Jet, which would be really fun, but I'm thinking Val could potentially have some storyline with EJ. I don't know what that would be, but anyways, jump ahead one month later, there's a time jump, and we get to see the premiere of Frozen the Musical, the documentary, which is just lovely. And Ricky does his little, I'm Ricky Bowen and you're watching Disney <laughs> Plus. That was just amazing. I loved the little red carpet thing. Everyone was like acting like, oh, it's gonna be such a great documentary. You know, Gina's like, it's about sisterhood. And Ashlyn's like, I didn't even remember there was a documentary. And then you get like all of the drama just spilled everywhere with just the trailer. And, you know, obviously got the whole love triangle thing. Then, you know, Ashlyn and Maddox situation going on. And then for some reason, Big Red's in there. And then he also says that he is bi. Maybe Big Red and Ashlyn are going to be able to kind of discover themselves together. I think I stole that quote from an article, but I thought the same thing, okay. Finally, we've got the love triangle ending. Just when I thought it couldn't get more heartbreaking. It's not like it was the most original line ever, but EJ's like, Ricky, I'd fake slap you, but I can't because you're my brother. Walks away, devastated again, and that's EJ's ending for the season, my goodness. Um, Corbin Blue's like, don't worry guys, you'll figure it out, hopefully. Um, and then like one second later, after EJ tells Ricky that they're brothers, EJ and Gina kiss multiple times and for more than a couple seconds. I wouldn't say I'm a Rena fan, shipper, <laughs> not quite yet, but I'm getting there. I think if I like rewatch the show, I'd appreciate it more because I know there was like a lot of chemistry going on in seasons one and two, but I just thought EJ and Gina were so sweet in season two and I loved how that kind of ended in season two, but obviously it didn't last very long. But anyways, let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode and this season and what you think is gonna happen in season four. You can check out my other videos of the other shows I watch if you would like. And you can like, subscribe, comment, and share if you want. But whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and God bless.